Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley and this is Design Digest, where we share design related news, tools, apps, and other cool stuff. This week, I'm trying a new hairstyle. Do you like it? I know you do. And that's the news for this week. Thank you so much. Bye bye. I'm obviously kidding. Oh my God, there are so many updates this week. We got Principle 3.0, Figma 2.0, Ghost 1.0, so many .0s. Probably the biggest news of the week is the release of Figma 2.0. Figma's latest update brings significant new features, prototyping and developer handoff. A great advantage of working with Figma is that you design in the cloud. It doesn't require any saving, exporting, or syncing. Not only that, but since it also works on any browser, it's not married to a platform. That means that it doesn't matter if you use a Mac or a PC. You can design with Figma on both. Another thing that makes Figma stand out is their multiplayer functionality. The new features only add to the same theme of collaboration. With prototyping and developer handoff, a Figma document could become your ultimate source of truth. A living document that works not only for the designer, but also for other stakeholders in the team, like product managers and developers. With handoff, designers can now share files with view-only access to developers, who will see a code tab in the properties panel. Developers can select objects and see red lines that measure the spacing between them. They can also get CSS, iOS, and Android markup or code. Now, is Figma's prototyping and handoff better than other tools like Envision, Marble, or Zeppelin? Not really. Other apps have been perfecting this kind of needs for a long time, so there's a lot of catch up to do from Figma. But the advantage of having one single place for everything and saving yourself from paying three or four different monthly subscriptions sounds really tempting. Personally, I'm excited to try Figma on a real project and see how it fits my current workflow. I think I might create a crash course on it too. Is that something that sounds interesting to you? A new really cool tool that I recommend is Gradient. Or is it Gradient? Gradient is a web app that allows you to create and discover beautiful gradients. But I'm going to let Eddie Lobanovsky, one of the creators of the app, tell us more about it. Pablo, hello world. This is Eddie Lobanovsky at Unfold. I'm here to talk about Gradient. It's one of our latest tools that we just released. Basically a tool for designers and developers with the ability to quickly grab, as you would have guessed, a gradient. We give you a uh, bunch of different presets customly created by hand. Um, you can just hit that copy CSS button and it will be copied to your clipboard. Or uh, we allow our users, if you call yourself designer, to modify and tweak it and make it, uh, make it truly unique for your project. I did not start Gradient. Gradient was started by one of our team members that unfold, uh, John Korzak. It started as an internal experiment and he called me to get an opinion and I I saw the potential. Gradient. Grabian. Grabian. Grab. I. And. Grabian. Grabian. The way you pronounce a gradient is a, just like a gradient where D being flipped to B. The idea of a gradient is to grab a gradient. So you would probably pronounce it just as, as you hear, as you read a gradient, I would imagine. Uh, but we won't get mad if you call it a gradient, which is totally cool too. Gradient. This tool was designed by David Kovalev. There is definitely a lot of uh, other gradient tools out there. Uh, there are plenty of beautiful looking websites that allow you to quickly jump on and copy a gradient style to your, for your CSS. And there's also a lot of websites that allow you to build custom gradients, but they all feel like they were designed back in, I don't know when, uh, before gradients were hot, I guess. So we wanted something uh, that looks beautiful, user-friendly, and has awesome gradients, of course. So that's, that's how Gradient came along. Pablo. Thanks again. Thanks for letting us share. Ooh. Peace. Principle just released a massive update. Principle 3. 
Principle three adds the ability to send events from a component to its parent or from the parent into a component. You can even have one component trigger animations into another component. And you know this is really cool because it sounds super complicated. Another update is the ability to control color in the drivers, lockable layers, improvements to a sketch import, and much more. Principal licenses include one year of free updates. If you purchased Principal less than a year ago, you get this update for free. But if you didn't, you will need to buy a new license to use 3.0. Now, some sad news. Microsoft's next Windows update will kill one of the most beloved and iconic apps, Microsoft Paint. Paint was the first design tool I ever used. I remember using it on my aunt's computer as a young kid. I would get glued to the screen creating pixel paintings. After using Paint, I realized that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. The death of Microsoft Paint marks the end of an era. Oh wait, oh yeah, oh really, okay, yeah. Well, I just got informed that apparently Microsoft was just trolling us. Paint isn't going anywhere. It's just going to be a free app you can get at the Windows Store. Wait, there's a Windows Store? The inspiration of the week come from Edmund Fence's beautiful website. His site features an interactive canvas for each song of his recent album. I won't share the music here because I don't want to get a copyright claim, but I recommend you to visit the page, turn up the volume, and get fully immersed in the audiovisual experience. After a long time being in beta, the open source blogging platform Ghost is announcing Ghost 1.0. Ghost is a powerful platform for creating an online blog or publication. People love Ghost because of its simplicity and hackability. With Ghost 1.0, they're releasing a new text editor with a cleaner design, a new toolbar, support for markdown tables, and common mark. The update also has a refresh UI with a better workflow and many small visual improvements. A lot has changed since the first release of Ghost. Tools like Medium and Squarespace have made it super easy for anyone to start a blog or a publication, taking a huge chunk of the market. But there's a big crowd that prefers writing with Markdown and having a platform that gives them more freedom. If you're one of these people looking for an open source, beautiful and simple blogging platform, I recommend you trying out Ghost. Now, a quick gem. If you're having trouble finding a good design podcast to listen to, you excellence, you excellence, you excellence just published a huge collection of design podcasts. The list is separated by categories with a link to the podcast and a short description of each publication. You can look at the essentials, the ones with in depth discussions, interviews on business and development shows. Go check it out and find the right podcast to listen to. Now, some news that is not design related, but still relevant. On Monday, Tesla welcomed to their board Ebony Media CEO, Linda Johnson Rice. She's the second woman out of a group of nine board members and the first African-American to hold that role. This marks a break from the more standard appointment of white males to board positions. A diverse boardroom creates a catalyst for more diverse hires across a company, and it also benefits from a diversity of thinking and skills. Hopefully, Tesla's move will inspire other companies to add more women and minorities to executive positions. Our illustrator of the week is Lauren Holm, a designer who splits her time between LA and New York. Her work has bright color palettes and playful letter forms. Some of her clients include Starbucks, Google, YouTube, and Time Magazine. Lauren is also the author of the popular blog and book Daily Dishonesty. Lauren Holm just did a collaboration with Baron Fick, where she used her notebook to document her travels around the globe, capturing her experiences while visiting South America, Europe, and Asia. You can check out Lauren's blog or find her on Instagram, Twitter, or Dribbble. One of the most popular icon sets on the web is getting an update, Symbolicons. Symbolicons, which has been used by Instagram, Dribbble, and others, is getting a 
Pro upgrade with over 2,000 icons and over 60 categories. It will be available for Illustrator, Sketch, Photoshop, SVG, PNG, and it will be optimized for Icon Jar. I have been a fan of this icon set for the longest time and I'm super excited for this update. That's it for this week. If you have a suggestion on what we should cover next, please leave a comment with a link. Thank you so much. See you next time.